How you doing, YouTube? Matt Nassa Beer Reviews. Back with a little bit of cane up in this piece in the form of their wooden cleat. Yeah. Wooden cleat is a 13.5% alcohol by volume blend of barley wines aged in Woodford Reserve double oak bourbon barrels and finished in a new toasted chestnut puncheon. I have not had this beer before, and this beer comes courtesy of this guy. And by that, I mean... Well, Stephen bought it, and uh, Stephen, you know, all know Stephen. He um, is a beer tuber um, subscriber extraordinaire. He came down for beer tuber losing a week or so, two weeks before he came down. He's like, "Hey, man." He's like, "Is it okay if I order cane in your house? Um, because I really want some, and they only deliver in house in state." And I was like, "Absolutely, dude." And he's like, "If you want some stuff, just..." You know, put it in there and let me know and just Venmo me, that kind of stuff. I was like, okay. What oh, I mean, this thing's rusty and messed up. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. Um, and I came here and I had all that stuff in my fridge uh, for a week or so. And then I actually ended up getting a new fridge. And um, put my old refrigerator out in the barn. That was the beer tube Palooza fridge. And I brought all his beer out there. Well... One of these was like carried out in like a four pack um, of not its other beer. So he missed it when he left. And he's like, God damn it. He's like, I forgot that at your house. And I said, Well, I'll just, I'll just, I'm going to send you a beer mail, dude. And I'll just wait. And he's like, Yeah, don't, don't worry about it. Forget about it. So I'm drinking it. So there you go. Courtesy of me packing it like a dum dum. Label wise, I like it. Listen. I love this little 250 mil, <laughs> 250 milliliter little itty bitty bottle has me so nostalgic for some of the great beers that I drank back in the day in these little tiny ass bottles. Not specifically this little 750 shapes, but I mean, in the grand scheme of things, this is a better format for these kind of beers. I mean, you're talking about a 13.5% double barrel barley wine finishing uh, 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 punching. I mean, obviously not much carbonation in there. Huge big old beer. But some of my favorite beers of all time have come in itty bitty bottles. You're talking about these little tiny um, Thomas Hardy bottles. Um, Courage, Russian Imperial Set used to come in these little, little, like, seven-ounce bottles, stuff like that. So, while well, I like bang for the buck and volume, this kind of tickles me pink a little bit. So, yeah, give it a whirl. There's a little bit of carbonation going on, nothing too crazy. Is that rich kind of Coca-Cola-like color going on? Let's get a nose. I'm really curious to see how this kind of comes off because it is barley went through and through, but it has this thick jammy component to it. Um, almost like plum jam, raspberry jam under ripened though. And I don't know if that is just this barley wine bringing this huge kind of rich component to it, or maybe it's that finishing in the punching, giving it a little bit of like, um, not wild fermentation, but kind of like dirty firm, like last, you know, yeah, you know, it's pretty clean throughout. Barrel aging here, fruit there, blah blah blah, from the spirits and all that kind of stuff. You throw it and finish it in that punch in. <sighs> Might have a little bit of bugginess going on in there, and it adds a little bit of funkiness to it. Remain to be seen until you actually taste it. But it has this rich, big, huge spirit component. This big, huge jammy. I'm actually leaning more raspberry now as far as jamminess goes. And it's just from booze to beer and everything in between, it's big, it's rich, it's sticky. Like, I almost feel like if I spilled this beer, it would just, like, I couldn't get it off me. Like, it would be that sticky. That's just how the nose kind of comes off. So it smells more like a bourbon barrel-aged stout barley wine blend more than a barley wine blend. But then again, you know, Kane is known for their bonkers level kind of barrel aging. So it kind of makes sense. It's a, it's a thick, like... You know that thing of that that orange fucking monster that thing that he did. It's like that thick, you know. I gotta, I just gotta dive in. Cheers. I really like this.
This is not. I don't know how to put this. There's something about this beer. Is beyond. It's beyond barreling. It's beyond barreling. It's beyond spirit. It's beyond barley wine. It has to be that chestnut punching. But they did they say fresh? And a new toasted. See new toasted. So that, that could mean it can't be. It has to be an old punchin that they retoasted. Because there's some kind of buggy kind of little thing that has touched this barrel aged beer and kind of created something jammy. It took that natural fruitiness of the barrel aging process and added this cool little like I don't even, it's not sour. It's not tart. It's jammy, but in, in an undersweetened kind of way. Naturally fermented jam? I don't know. Interesting. It really does come off as a like a, a, a stout barley wine blend. As far as malt based, there's much chocolate in here. It's a bunch of richness. You talk about blended barley wines. You know what I could see this actually being? And I have no idea. They're not going to tell you. They're not going to tell me. Is that they made a barley wine. And he blended it with one of their um, anniversary beers. That's what it kind of comes off as. Because they do like a Solera method on their... On their um, their anniversary beer, which is this one right here. It's a Belgian dark. But it's like every year. It's like pseudo Solera. It's not like traditional Solera method to where it's like, you know, uh, feeding throughout the whole thing. So they take some of the original anniversary and include it in each subsequent release of the anniversary. So you start to get these like soft little soy sauce notes. I'm never big on calling those out because I think it's one of the more delicious fantastical things in there. It comes off more as like a rich honestly, jamminess. Um, kind of like a weird umami jam um, is how it comes off for me. So I rarely say soy sauce with these beers, but that's what this is uh, for for a lot of people that like to call out that kind of flavor profile in here. But I don't think it's offensive. I don't think it's even close to offensive. I think it's absolutely fantastic. And just comes off as this just roasty, chocolatey, sweet spirit bourbon barrel charry slightly stouty barley wine with a big fruit component that is augment, augmented by soy sauce it's old beer is what it is I think you have to really enjoy old beer to like this beer and while you are paying a premium for this tiny ass MFing bottle with wax. This is the absolutely 100% proper serving of this beer for a human. Yeah, these beers typically come in, you know, 5 mil, 500 mil, 750s. And they're fine for sharing. But I'm a hermit. I live alone. It's COVID times, you know. So if I were to buy this beer and not steal it from Steven, this is like, I'm going to open one of these to my head. And it's the perfect serving. It's the absolute perfect serving. What's 250 mil in in, um, in uh, ounces? I'm going to look it up. It'd be annoying. 250 ml. Two. OZ. 8.3? Oh, 8.4. <laughs> that close. Because that's what these typically were, these old school, like the Hardys. What is this one? What is this old Hardy? It's probably spot on. 25 CL. So that's, tw yeah, it's 250 ML. So it's the same exact amount of fluid. And it just kind of makes sense. And obviously, you know, Mike, Mike Kane knows that. And that's why you put it in these. This is a romantic beer for me. 
this is definitely like uh, I don't think this is going to be a lot of people's like favorite thing because they think some people oh it's soy sauce or too it's this weird you know salty jamminess or something like that I think there's like a lot of people that come will nitpick this beer and view it as kind of like you know, eh, 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 whatever but for me might be one of if not one of the best beers that Kane has ever made I like this better uh, let me pump the brakes on it I like this just as much as A Night to End All Dawns uh, I like this just as much as who was the beer we did Heart something Heart they're they're um Popped up barley wine, untamed heart, unchained heart, something heart, vengeful, vengeful heart. I like this, but I also know that there's going to be a lot of people that are just like, this is poopy. And, and it's probably going to be like an additional backlash on this because it's not only is it poopy, but it came in such a tiny bottle and I'm like pissed. They're like, oh, you know, you give me like a, a poopy beer, but it's in this tiny ass bottle. I love this. I think this is fantastic. Thank you, me, for stealing this from uh, from Stephen. Yeah, this is great. Um, what I want from aged barley wine, old ale, those kind of things. I mean, they're kind of doing the kind of let's manufacture that by doing these nineteen different things that ends up making this beer taste like a fifteen-year-old barley wine, but it works. So you can fake time. Here I am thinking the whole time you can't. Um, but this thing has time on it, too. Like, dirt, I don't know when they made these, but that cap is rusty AF and all kinds of dirty and messed up. So they did not bottle this. They did, There's no bottle date on this, but they didn't bottle this, and a couple weeks later they sold it. They bottled this a long time ago and just let it sit until they thought it was ready, which I think is even makes the beer cooler uh is this one of the better barley wines i've had as of late yes is it one of the best yes is it matt rushmore status yes 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 um valued availability on this i have no idea i ordered it for steven but then i stole it so i don't remember um i would hope this is less than 10 bucks a bottle i doubt it is nine dollars a bottle would be kind of perfect for this i believe i want it to be cheaper um, but I'm assuming it was more than that. Um, brewery only. And leave you with, if you like what we like this, if you like those old school beers, old school barley wines that came in nine ounce bottles and you're nostalgic for that period of time, you will go gaga over this. If you th find soy sauce and stouts and, and barley wines uh, in aged beer, even the slightest hint of it offensive, you're going to hate this beer. If you like St. Adam's Triple Bock before it got like bonkers crazy, you'll love this beer. It's not that beer, but it's it, it has some it, a, a similar DNA pattern to what Triple Bock was before it became crazy Triple Bock. So think of like a like a thirteen percent Triple Bock that isn't as oxidized, I guess. Um, yeah, you'll love this. Here you go. Let me know if you've had this down there, if you want to talk about it. Thank you very much, Stephen, for letting me steal this from you. Um, uh, massive beers, if you want to check me out, doing the social media stuff. Beer Massive, you can go check out podcasts. We've talked to Mike from Gade before. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed our review. Hopefully enjoying a little wooden cleat right now. Hopefully see you next time. Cheers.